Welcome back everyone to our continuation of the AWS Integrated Services. This service is quite popular and quite powerful, and that is Lambda, AWS Lambda. It is an event-driven serverless compute service. Now, what does that mean? <clears throat> you don't have to worry about knowing what kind of EC2 uh, instance that you need. You don't have to think about um, how much do I want it to scale out. You don't have to think about auto scaling. You don't have to think about uh, what kind of environment I want. Well, I mean, you do have to think about those things a little bit, but really it's like, if you think about the code as like the lay, like the cherry on top, it just like tells the computer what to do. That's, that's where as a developer you come in, right? Then you have the whole cake to the bottom. And the whole cake is, well, the computer itself, right? There's also where the computer exists. There's the whole stack beneath it, you know, what network, you know, what, uh, what other computers it communicates with, what other databases, well, all that kind of stuff. So it's like Amazon through, through Lambda, AWS bakes the cake for you. You maybe just get to choose like the frosting and the flavor, right? But you, but ultimately you focus on the cherry, right? And then you just put that cherry right on top and you don't have to think about the cake after just some some very very rudimentary and simple things, and so the nice thing about this is that it's metered on a sub second uh, level, so you only pay while your actual code is running. This is very powerful because say you have some sort of image enhancement code that you've run that you've uh, created in Python, right, and you have an app where people upload their photo and it gets enhanced. It gets brightened, their blemishes are removed, their teeth are whitened and straightened. You know, their eyes are, their eyes are made bigger like they do in, um, in some Tokyo uh, photo booths. So anyway, if you were using EC2, right? Well, then you would want that code to be on computer and then you want a computer that does that, right? But you're gonna be paying the whole time. So while someone's on your website and just browsing around, you're still paying. If someone uploads a photo and then you're gonna be paying while it's running. If someone uh, is chatting on the, on the website, you're still gonna be paying. Versus Lambda, you're not paying at all until somebody uploads a photo. While that code is running, you're paying. And then once that code is finished running, you, you're, you stop paying. That's on a sub-second meter, which is quite nice. There's support for most languages that you can think of. You simply put the code out there and no matter how many times it gets run, how much demand there is for that code, AWS will ensure that all the users are getting the same high quality availability and uh, latency. And of course you can log and you can sit, you can store those logs elsewhere to analyze and so on and so forth. So you upload the code, and then there's a few environment configurations that you do have to consider. And then you also configure the triggers as well. So uh, for example, that photo upload, well, what does that mean? That photo can go to an S3 bucket. So every time a photo goes to an S3 bucket, uh, S3 will send out a message or, you know, maybe through CloudWatch or it, it, it will essentially say that a photo has been uploaded. And then that becomes the trigger for your Lambda. Uh, so your Lambda function will take that message, it will take the information about which photo was uploaded, it will run the code on that photo, and it will finish running. So those are the kinds of things that you do have to set, and that's why it's called uh, event-driven serverless. Along with that, you know, AWS provides a nice dashboard where you can see kind of like graphical representation of how much it's being called, uh, how many errors are being logged, et cetera.